And if Dave Duncan's squad is going to have a chance to repeat 207, C.J. Pawkan, the Class D Player of the Year, is featured around 25 points per game in the semis against Lawrence, 15 points, eight of six, six rebounds, and some outstanding leadership. Number 30, a big time star, Matt. Yeah, a very humble kid too, the quarterback of the football team. So he's a quarterback on the floor as well. Now, this Western Michigan Christian Club is a little bit more direct, but that's because of the youth of this basketball team. Jim Corman's clubs have been here before, but not with this type of inflection of youngsters. is one of those guys, but he's the guy who leads the way for this team. Well, he, he dominated the semis with his long range shooting. 18 points, that was all on three pointers alone. 34, six rebounds, six assists, a very balanced performer. And the thing about those numbers, Matt, he did all of that in only 32 minutes. Amazing what some of these guys can do. One of these fan bases will be green with Emmy from the other. Both wear green and white, and how appropriate is it that they play at the place that is decked out in green and white? The home of Michigan State University. We'll jump it up for Class D bragging rights when we come back after this. Our style, they have to be in shape. The MHSAA Boys Basketball Finals on Fox Sports Detroit are brought to you by Taco Bell. The MHSAA Boys Basketball Finals on Fox Sports Detroit are brought to you by Taco Bell. Think outside the bar. Welcome back to East Lansing. Alongside my partner, Tim McCormick, my name is Matt Shepard. This is the site of the high school state championships. It starts the first of four here on Fox Sports Detroit with the Class D championship showdown between Western Michigan Christian and Cedarville. At forward, 6'5", junior, 24, Evan Brunsma. For Cedarville at forward, 6'4", senior, number 30, C.J. Pocan. For the Warriors, at forward, 5'11", senior, number 12, Darian Burse. For the Trojans at forward, 6'1", senior, 33, Luke Murray. Center for Western Michigan Christian, 6'7", junior, 44, Tyler Ray. For Cedarville, at center, 6'5", senior, 42, Scott McGreevy. For Western Michigan Christian at guard, 5'6", junior, number 10, Jeff Burris. 
Jim Gorman right there, 30 years as the man in charge, 460 wins under his collective belt, nine times his teams have won 20 or more, and four straight district championships. That, Tim McCormick, is consistency without a doubt. And, and I like the way that both of these coaches approach their season and their program. The emphasis on fundamentals is very strong indeed. And also pace of play. Kids love to run. They're not afraid to get up and down the court. Dave Duncan, seven regional titles, including four in a row. This is the fourth time he's had the Trojans into the Final Four. And it'll be controlled by the Warriors. But last year, Cedarville lost the semis to Western Michigan Christian. And you see, they're going to get to the rim, Matt. This is going to be a very fast-paced game. On the wing, this is Luke Murray. Paul Can. Okay, starting out, very aggressive pressure defense, forcing the turnover. Darren Burst with a steal, a pull-up jumper, and a rolled out. They battle for it inside, and Paul Can grabbed the rebound. The kid averages a double-double, ten and a half boards per game this year, and unlimited range. Bingo. Full court pressure, 2-2-1. Two, two, this is a UConn look, and they're trying to slow the tempo. UConn hopes they have this much success playing for a championship, don't they? And the baseline burst, can't hit it. Paul Campbell, the second consecutive rebound. That's going to be challenging. They've got a, a burst and two bursts. You're right. Very good steals team for Muskegon, Western Michigan Christian. First the senior, Burris, our juniors and sophomores. That's what Jim Gorman meant by youth on his ball club. Does help, this is London Burris. On the wing to his brother, and he buries the three to tie. Isn't Jim that nice to see Burris. brothers sharing? Yes, it is. <laughs> Not oftentimes you see that. A very unique perspective on the brotherly love that are the Burrises with Leslie Moreno a little bit later on in our broadcast. Good pick and roll inside, but Cedarville couldn't hold on, and it's a turnover. How much of some of these turnovers, Tim, early on are nerves? And even though they've been here before, you can't help but get caught up in the moment sometimes. It's a combination, Matt, of nerves and excitement. They've been playing all year long for a chance to, to be on this stage, to win a championship. And so you combine nerves and excitement. That's what happens. Burris launches a three, but missed it. It's tapped out and grabbed by Jeff Burris. His little 2 3 zone, mixing up the defensive looks. Open from the corner. The southpaw can't hit it, but a foul called. And he'll go to the line for three free throw attempts. London Burris will tow it where he shoots 78%. Now, let's take a look at the three point shooting of CJ Pawkin. That, uh, that has come from hours and hours and hours in the backyard. And, and if you are going to allow a player to get to the line early and build his confidence with easy free throws. That's a huge mistake. London Burris doesn't need any assistance. And in an early game, you get some free throws, build your confidence. That could be a long night or morning for that matter. The sophomores, the guy that Tim McCormick highlighted at the very beginning of the broadcast because of his team high 34 points. But only two of those came from the free throw line in that semifinal win over Sterling Heights Parkway Christian, a game in which the Warriors led from the very get-go to the end. 
He only gets one of three, though, and a pushing foul called against Evan Brunsma. And Brunsma is a player to focus on in this game. He is the second star, but at times he can take over games himself. It's a definite one-two punch. Almost averaging a double-double himself. 15 points, nine and a half boards for the six foot five junior who wears 24 in green. Taylor Smith dumps it inside. Second time it's gone off the fingertips of Scott McGreevy. Cedarville had a frantic pace in the semifinal win against Lawrence the other day. Today they've been forced into a half-court game a little bit more. Now, against Cedarville, you can expect an exciting game. Coach Jim Gorman said this might be one of the most exciting he's ever been part of. Both teams trying to go inside a little bit, it seems like, Tim. I wonder if, being that the strength is the guard position, I'm a little surprised that they're trying to go inside. Well, Matt, you can see that the defenses are extended to cover the three-point line. Both these teams very dangerous to beat. There's a steal by Jarosh. Plays it up ahead. And an easy lay. Oh, he blew it. Taylor Smith almost too wide open. Two on one down low. And a blocking foul called against Scott McGreevy. As I watch the, the game plans of Coach Duncan and Coach Gorman materialize, it's really evident that there is great respect for the other team's defense. The idea is that we better push it up and try to hit before that defense gets set. It's a steal by Parkan off the inbound pass. As the lone bucket for the Trojans. And a knock away by Bruins. But got part of the arm, though. It's the second personal foul on Evan Bruins. Jarosh, who had a huge game in the semifinal, a career high 27. It says a lot about him that when the lights are bright, he had his best game. In and out, and a rebound inside, and they'll pull it out. Good decision there by Taylor Smith. Smith for three. And Bruins no one to clean. Warriors up by one. What a luxury have to have your big man that can go coast to coast with the ball. Yeah, to handle it like a guard. Baseline drive, and one! Nope, they're gonna call an offensive foul. He stepped out of bounds, excuse yep. me. Left foot on the baseline. What a beautiful delivery of the ball, though. No match Very aggressive man-to-man -man defense. Way downtown for Paul Cam, but a little short. And it'll be Warrior basketball. Western Michigan Christian, I, I would guess this pace is more to their liking, Tim. They average about 69 points per game. Cedarville is over 80 per contest. They like to run up and down, as you mentioned in our open. Darian Burris, and now Jeff Burris delivers to London Burris, who will drive. And lay it off for Burris. Couldn't hit it, but he'll go to the line for two. Cedarville foul 30. As you see, Darian first at the line, a slasher, hang time, loves to drive, and, and you notice the way on the penetration, he used his body as a battering ram to make the contact and then concentrate on the finish. Yeah, pretty thick kid, 5'11", buck 78, put together well. Evan Brunsma sits down and do you think there's anybody left in Cedarville this no, morning? No, I really don't. I don't think there's anybody left in, in maybe in the Muskegon area, at least, that follow the, the Warriors. The Warriors convert twice at the free throw line. They've doubled up the Trojans 6-3. We're early on, though. 348 left to go in the opening frame at the Breslin Center on Fox Sports Detroit.
go to image. Western Michigan Christian on a 6 0 run, and they lead Cedarville early on 6 3. Welcome back to the Breslin Center alongside Tim McCormick. My name is Matt Shepard. Time to take a look at our road to the finals brought to you by Taco Bell. The Warriors get here through a very busy time, but averaging 74 and a half points per game. They knocked off Sterling Heights Parkway Christian in the semis thanks to getting 21 points off the turnovers. Meanwhile, Cedarville. Rolled their first game of districts against Pickford. They scored 93 points and beat Lawrence the other day by just three in an up and down affair. A lot of points scored by this Trojans ball club, the East Upper Peninsula champions. And it's sort of a surprise. Rebounding is obviously an important statistic. And in the semifinal games, both of these teams were pounded on the glass. So impressive. They were crafty and found other ways to win. DeRoche couldn't hit the three. Paul Can with a gratuitous rebound. And a reach in foul called against Jeff Burris. To start this game, cold shooting both ways. Each squad off to one for six start from the field. And Cedarville's not used to that. They shoot 48% on the year. Wow. That's dynamite. Yeah. Shot 47% against Lawrence in the semifinal game. That's it's tough to score 80 points unless you're shooting the ball well and shooting it a lot too, right? I well, mean, the, the thing that's so impressive is that remember, <laughs> these are 32 minute games. That's a lot of points in a hurry. of rebounding opportunities. If you want to win this game, hit the defensive boards hard. Warriors clinging to a one-point lead. Western Michigan Christian in the dark green. Here's a three launched and buried by London Burris. Had 73 on the year from downtown. And it's a four-point lead now. Man-to-man -man defense. So far, containment is very important. Western Michigan Christian foul 10. Jeff Burris his second fourth. With the left foul. hand. And the reason that was available because defensively, Burris, if you make Tyler Ray come over and, and try to contest shots, all of a sudden he doesn't have his box out responsibilities. Paul can on the drive. Forced it off the glass. No. Fights for the rebound. Had it for a moment. Gathered it underneath. Then had it stripped. Demario Harris able to reach in there and knock it away. He leads the break and tried to shovel it inside. Had it knocked out of bounds off Cedarville. Yeah. I don't think that it did look like Dave Duncan was very happy after that play. Notice on the glass, bodies flying. Every, everybody rebounds on these teams. And yeah, the guards get down low, don't they? Foul, and we're headed the other way. A foul Tyler called Ray against Tyler Ray. First his first. Foul. Played six minutes of this opening quarter. This is a motion offense run by Dave Duncan. He actually learned this from Bruce Weber of the Fighting Illini. Oh. Bruce Weber got his team to the NCAA Lawyer tournament. One and done. Still got him there, didn't he? Sure did. And, and they, in the Big Ten. Yeah. What they do with their offense is they spread the court as, as you see the 
the spacing. They're, they're very good off the dribble, and they, they don't always drive for themselves. They want to try to kick to their teammates, and they shoot the ball well, so that makes a lot of sense. And they have a lot of interchangeable parts, too. Look, Murray will sit down. Jordan Baker, who wears number four in white, is into the ball game for Cedarville. Baker hit a couple of free throws the other day against Lawrence to clinch the game. Taylor Smith splits the pair, and it's a three-point lead for Western Michigan Christian. Harris to London Burris, and a traveling violation against him. Jim Gorman, always a very positive coach. Even though that's a turnover, he gets up, claps, tries to scream encouragement rather than on what he should be doing or what he didn't do. He's talking about what he could be doing next time with the basketball. That's a two off the heel. Another offensive board from McGreevy and a whistle inside, and they'll call it against Western Michigan Christian. McGreevy missed the front end of the one-on-one. How important is that, too? There's a steal after the throwaway. Baker up the wing. He'll peel back, hit the trailer. Paul Can with an easy lay-in. Good vision on the part of Jordan Baker. 9-8. Western Michigan Christian clinging to a one-point lead. Vanderlaan inside, and he walked with it. That's three straight turnovers now by the Warriors. Andy Jarosh, a senior who grew up watching Dave Duncan's kids win that title in 2007. To Paul Can, turnaround jumper, comes up short. Grabbed his own board though, fires up a three, money! So far, from what I'm seeing from Cedarville, they're not getting a lot out of their press, but it is speeding the pace up, which I think is their, their favor. You know, the, the beauty of it, you and I saw it the other night in the semifinals, with that press, a lot of times they'll get burned, but they'll Cedarville fire right back 30. with a football-like okay, pass down the length of the ball. floor to get an easy bucket and just force the other team to not gain any emotion yeah, momentum. Yeah, the purpose of a press is to speed up your opponent. It's a tool to play the speed game, and, and that, that is why they score 80 points or more per game. Vandalon at the free throw line, and he shoots 52%. Pawkan with two personal fouls. He'll take his seat next to Dave Duncan. And Cedarville welcomes back in Luke Murray, who wears 33 in white. Cedarville on a 6-1 run, way up ahead. A jumper from the baseline rolls off, and a whistle inside, and it's going to go against Western Michigan Christian again. That's what you were referring to, Tim, right there. They quickly run down the length of the floor, get a look. It may not have cashed in, but at least they're at the line. And stepping to the line is Scott McGreevy at 6-4. He can post up. And in their game against Lawrence High School, he faced a 6'11 center and did an excellent job defensively. Shane Willington is a big kid, and, and if you're looking at a game key, Scott McGreevy went a long way in mobilizing him. Yeah, Willington, an all-stater. It's a steal. Murray to Jarosh. 
It's a nice screen. Launches for three, just off the side of the rim, and that'll do it for one quarter of play. Jaros might have had a little bit more time than he first thought, but Cedarville used a 6-0 run to get back on top after one quarter of play at the Breslin Center with Class D bragging rights on the line. It's the Trojans 11, the Warriors 10. Back with more on Fox Sports Detroit after this brief timeout. She's a great inspiration to Cedarville basketball. She's always there picking you up, and she's always right there on our chest, right in our hearts. So. Uh. I can listen to what the sounds like. Yes. I can't hear her at all. Hey, Joshy. One, two, three, four, five. It's like really like. Hey, Josh. Muscle. I can barely hear it. Yeah, that sounds fine. Yeah, we're not gonna do it now. Welcome back to the Breslin Center. We played eight minutes. Still plenty of time left in this one. Cedarville leading 11-10 over Western Michigan Christian, a club that has won three state championships back in 92, in 2000, and just a year ago. Jim Gorman at the helm of this program that takes an awful lot of pride, not only in their basketball, but in their entire sports programs in the entire city. They draw students from a 34-mile radius in Muskegon County. You see the seven boys state titles, but they also have three boys state soccer championships too. So quite a lot going on in the Muskegon area. And of course we had Muskegon on during our coverage of Michigan high school football championships as well. Our school profiles are presented by Farmers Insurance. Now really the, the turning point for Muskegon Western Michigan Christian earlier this year they played the powerhouse Wyoming Tri Unity Christian and were beaten badly but they came back later in the year fueled by that contest and beat them by three points and I think that's when they really started to believe yeah. that, that they were they were in a position where they could win it all this year. Well keep in mind they finished second in the River Valley Conference and yet they're playing for the state championship. It's about when you peak isn't it Tim? No doubt. Falcan, nice delivery inside for the easy layup for Luke Murray. You, you really see the balance of Pawkin. He does so much to make his team better. Yeah, it, it really is the glue that keeps this team together. There's a bomb from Brunsma for three. Tied at 13. Nice shot right there from Evan Brunsma. He kind of extends the defense a little bit, doesn't he? Here's a three from Taylor Smith that's short. Paul with another rebound. Puts it back up from 15. Keeps it alive, and this time it's the Warriors who come away with it. And we get a timeout for Jim Gorman's ball club. Heads up play by Darian Burse. The senior knew exactly what to do when he hit the deck here at the Breslin set. Yeah, in practice on Friday, Jim Katie Gorman Hall was wise because transition Rolex defense was the number one emphasis. They knew that to have a chance to win this ball game, they have to get back because the Trojans are fast and there's really no deception in their game. Yeah. They want to get out and push it as hard as they possibly can. As Tim had mentioned, neither team has found their shooting eye just yet, but a lot of that might have to do with the defense. There's a good look at Paul Cam. We talk about his offensive numbers, 22 points, 10 and a half boards. Keep in mind, he also averages six assists per game and four and a half steals. So when Tim says he does it all, 
You better believe it. He's got the numbers and the statistics to back it up. A little known fact, he also tapes ankles, too. I did not know that. <laughs> I do know he quarterbacks the club, and there's a reach-in foul against Andrew Giroux. Cedarville foul three, Andrew Giroux, his first 50 foul. Offensively for the Warriors, they they run a lot of set plays against man-to-man -man defense, but Cedarville changes things up so much that it takes a while to figure it out. Bruins who couldn't handle that left-handed delivery from London Burris, and we head back the other way. Warriors aren't used to turning the ball over as often as they have so far. Seven turnovers in the opening quarter make it eight now in the ball game. The Roche for three. In and out. And a rebound to Bruinsmo, who lost it on the deck. For three. Paul Can, another offensive board. Missed it, but will go to the line. Boy, that left handed layup almost went down high off the glass from CJ Paul Can. At this point in the game, it's. It's a lot less scoring than we would have anticipated. By far, but yeah. You can look no further than the field goal percentage. Now, at this point, we're going to credit really good defense for the, the shooting that's below 20% for both teams. Paul Canny, 75% free thrower. Calmly buries them both. Never shaken. But often stirs it up and leads Cedarville to a two-point advantage. Bruinsmo with a nice grab at center court. Burris drives inside, an offensive foul. Scott McGreevy doing the dirty work inside for the Trojans to take the charge, and it's the second foul against Burris. Yeah, this is the play right here where you love to see the player just take that nice, comfortable jump stop and shoot the 12 footer off the backboard. So it's really an art that has is, is gone by the wayside over the years, especially because. The defender stand there. He's not going to try to block this shot. Murray left alone for three. Takes it and makes it. Look out now. Cedarville starting to get that range a little bit, Tim. Sometimes it will take a free throw or an easy shot to try and open things up for an outside shooter. 13-4 run now for the Trojans. Bruins tries to answer and does. Three. For 24. To like his game, that's for sure. Well, I, I like the way both these teams play. This is fun. It, it's not like you're coming down and grinding out the contest on the defense. They play good defense, but they shoot, they all dribble and drive. Smith shoots, but missed it. It's a three on one break for the Warriors. An easy lay in. That's well run. <laughs> Jeff Burris yeah, cashed Burris. in, but boy, did they get into that set quickly thanks to London Burris. And, and did you notice the way they were trying to take the charge and he totally avoided, avoided by going to a 45 degree angle cut. Tied yet again, this time at 18 with 517 remaining. Jim Gorman talking over things with his club as is Dave Duncan. Let's take a look at Cedarville, shall we? A little closer look. A school profile presented by Farmers Insurance. Located uh, about 31 miles northeast of the Big Bridge. Really a lumber and fishing port back in the late 1800s. And of course, they won their first state championship back in 2007 under the direction of Dave Duncan. His twin boys played on that ball club. His youngest son is a manager. His daughter plays at Cedarville. And his wife oftentimes keeps the shot chart. Oh, that's good. Hey, we had a chance to talk to Jordan and Jason Duncan. They came up before the contest today. Delightful young guys. And they are both students at Saginaw Valley State. Cardinals always with a good program. An offensive foul called against Luke Murray. Trying to set the screen. And the Warriors take over from there. Murray. 
Well, you can tell the talent on this ball club, Tim. I know each coach shortens his bench as the playoffs progress. But whether you play this as starters or a couple of guys off the bench for either one of these teams, they're all contributing. It's nice to see. Well, I watched in warm-ups, and they shoot the ball so well. But the nice thing is that the programs get the, the young players involved. In, and there's the mentoring. Someday they are going to be in this game, and it's going to be fueled by this right here. Darian Burris could hit the follow-up. Saved it from going out of bounds. Forced it off the small square and down. Tough shot. Darian Burris. Warriors in front by a bucket. Smith with a drive and a knockaway out of bounds. Tyler Ray said, eat that. Yeah, it <laughs> looked like it. You, you've had plenty of those blocks in your career. Yeah, against me. But, no, but nice, nice hustle. Very good. And he went straight up and down there. Good delivery of the basketball. And on the drive. Little contact. And a foul called against Cedarville on the attempted offensive rebound. They'll call it on Cedarville Scott McGreevy, his, his second. That's his second foul. Now, this is something to keep an eye on because Western Michigan Christian is in the bonus and it's very early. Stepping to the line is Evan Bruinsma. He's their top interior defender, but if you if you focus too hard on London Burris, Evan can take over games. I think he deserves a lot of All-State credit. Oh, we got a, because We've seen Western Michigan Christian in the playoffs so often. We've kind of seen Evan Bruins progress as a player. We've always thought he's had a lot of talent, but he's really extended his skills as he progresses in his school years. He's just a junior. Omari Lewis is into the ball game for the Warriors. He wears 42 in green. And Taylor Smith sits down in favor of Zach McFarlane for Cedarville. Yeah. Yesterday, how do you like these numbers in the semis against Sterling Heights Parkway Christian? Bruinsma had 20 points and get this 16 rebounds. Oh, that's a heck of a double double. There's a steal by Bruinsma and he leads the break and threw it off Paul Can's head and out of bounds. Love to give it to one of your better ball handlers there if you're a big guy as you reach that middle court strike, wouldn't you? Yeah, I, I agree, but I think that Jim Gorman gives all of his players the confidence and the courage. Go ahead and handle it. I think you're right. Actually, both these coaches do that. They give him the green light. And a walking violation against Jeff Burris. Zach McFarlane. Well, every foul at this point are points for Western Michigan Christian. Defensively, Cedarville has got to be a little bit wiser with how aggressively they pursue the ball. It's 16 of 19 from the stripe in their victory over Sterling Heights Parkway Christian. Burris makes the front end. He was five for five in that contest. Boasting 17 points, four boards, a couple of assists and steals. Okay, do you think there were some pretty good one-on-one -on -one games growing up with his brother? I would guess so. They might be keeping a chart at home even to this day. 357 remaining in the opening half. It's been back and forth. Right now, the Warriors have it rolling. Western Michigan Christian on a 10-0 spurt, and they lead at the Presidency. Carolyn, can you hear me? 
Carolyn. Carolyn. Okay, I can hear you. Yep. She was a great inspiration to Cedarville basketball. She's always there picking you up. And Look at the glow. Western Michigan Christian leading at 23-18 with just under four minutes left in the opening half. Welcome back. You know, most people will take a look at these two teams and they'll notice Cedarville is wearing a black patch on their left shoulder today to remember Mary Beth. It's been an emotional season for the Trojans. Here's Leslie Moreno with more on that story. Leslie. Thanks, Matt. Even though Mary Beth Pockin is no longer with us, she's been an inspiration to the Cedarville team. Mary Beth was the sister-in-law of head coach David Duncan and the aunt to star player CJ Pockin. Mary Beth passed away over Christmas break suddenly of complications of diabetes, but she's been a great, a great driving point for this team ever since. She was a great inspiration to Cedarville basketball. She's always there picking you up and She's always right there on our chest, right in our hearts. So uh, it's definitely big. If we can get this one, it's uh, in dedication to Mary Beth. You know, it was a big blow to us, big blow to all of our kids, because I don't know if you've seen the movie Radio, but Mary was our radio. And uh, so our kids, both teams wore patches for her, and she's, had, she's got a special place in our heart, and I know she's shining down right now. That's right, and Mary Beth was also the assistant coach of the girls team. It's clear that she's made a huge impact on the boys as well. Matt, back to you. All right, no question about that, Leslie, and the neat thing too is that she would come over, she would talk to these kids. It didn't matter that she wasn't coaching them. They all respected her as the person and as the basketball coach that she was, and thus the due respect that is earned to Mary Beth can here today. Uh, it was a very difficult Christmas and yeah. and Mary Beth told the girls team I want you to win a ring for me and it didn't get done but I think that everything would be great if they could Everyone get the boys to win a championship for Mary Beth. And Mary Beth would be the first to tell it would mean just as much to her. Paul can posting up inside draws a triple team kicks it out for an open three but it's a little short loose ball picked up by Cedarville. Jarosz with a pull up. That was blocked by Bruinsma. Tapped it out ahead. Good balance up by Jeff Burris. Feeds the right side, but missing the layup there was Demario Harris. Oh, what a steal, but stepped out of bounds. Barely. Demario Harris, great anticipation on the wing. Off the dribble. You're not going to get all the way with Evan Bruins, but you see the way he was able to direct the ball almost as an outlet pass with a deflection. I, I love the defensive pressure that we're seeing from the green. Jarosz can't hit the three and boarded inside by Omari Lewis. And a foul in the backcourt by Taylor Smith. Free throws. Well, that Bruins would tap out too. He did it with his left hand and avoided contact to avoid what could have been a, a run over like foul. So, pretty impressive there, too. And, and those are the type of things like these are really good coaches, but that's innate. Yes. He, he, he's got a basketball IQ that allows him to make those kind of plays. A lot of other ball players might try to reach over, grab the ball, and commit a foul in the process. Darian Burst gets a shooter's roll on the first. Burst averaging 10 points per game and had that very number in the semifinal win. Well, how exciting to watch Melvin Dale ABT play coming up later today. Michael Talley won three as a player. Now he wants to win one with his son as a coach. More to him winning it for his son than anything else. Good looking three from the wing for Taylor Smith. He buried one in a 16 point performance against Lawrence in the semis. He's got Cedarville back within four and a blocking foul and called inside. Called against Scott McGreevy. That's his third and that's a big one right there. Dave Duncan will have to 
think long and hard about whether or not to keep his six foot five senior in the ball game. Oh yeah, that that was the right call. Angles are so important, and his body was turned a half a step late. And what a good interior defender he's been for them. Lewis makes the first. There's the answer from Coach Duncan right there. He takes McGreevy out with those three fouls, and he welcomes in Connor McLeod, a six foot six senior or sophomore, I should say. You like the sound of that? Six foot six sophomore? Yeah. Well, how tall is your son? He looks about six foot five or so, and he's just a freshman for crying out loud. They're growing them tall everywhere, especially in Cedarville, 27-21. Western Michigan Christian in front by a half dozen. Paul can good move. Missed it, followed it right up, but couldn't hit that one either. You love the way he goes to the glass, though. Never gives up on the play. It looked to me like CJ released the ball, and he knew that it was off, so he had an advantage trying to get a very surprised, though, that he did not finish on the offensive rebound. Warriors haven't had any problem breaking the press. Bruins Last seven points from Western Michigan. Christian come at the stripe. That one's off the heel. Lewis with a rebound. And do we have a jump ball or a foul? Jump we got a jump ball and a possession arrow in favor of Western Michigan Christian. First likes to hit it off the back side of the opposition if they have their back turned to him, but didn't do it that time. Brunsma missed the three, and a rebound by Burst, and he's fouled. Well, they may not have a lot of height, but they've got some bulk inside and aren't afraid to grab those rebounds. Well, it's a gang rebound mentality that if you're not really tall, if you send five guys to the glass and occupy that space, you can really do some good things. Straight points for Western Michigan Christian at the strike. James Mitchell is into the ball game for Cedarville. He wears 50 in white. Bruins must sits down for Western Michigan Christian, and Elliot Vanderlaan is back in. Burst has made a living at the line today. 29-21. The Warriors 12 of 15 from the strike. That three off the mark, and Bangalore on the rebound. The Warriors will push it. Jeff Burris, coast to coast, a hook pass for Lewis. Forced it up on the left hand, short. Hawk can, great rebound. Leads the break, they've got numbers too. Up the right side, and the layup is good for Jarosz. All because of the vision by C.J. Parkan. Six point Warrior lead. Bullet pass inside, knocked away, and that'll be Warrior basketball. You know, with the emotion that, that you see in a setting like this, it's really important to get into your bench, and getting out in transition against a very good half-court defense is a phenomenal idea for Cedarville. Tyler Ray back in for Western Michigan Christian. I like that Jarosz didn't even put the ball on the floor. He grabbed it and put it up and in right away. And you also notice the delivery was right at the numbers, a perfect pass. Jordan Baker back in, and Luke Murray sits down for Cedarville. Ray off the inbound. Paul came with a rebound. Look at the outlet. Jarosz, good catch over the shoulder, takes it to the rack and laid it in. Uh, I have no idea how he knew he was that far down the court. What a delivery of the basketball. And we saw him do it in the semis time after time, and another turnover, an unforced turnover, if I can borrow a tennis term, on the part of the Warriors. The Warriors, they defend like they look like they're having fun. They, they enjoy their work the way they pressure the ball. Taylor Smith on a drive. Nice bounce pass inside. Up and one to come for James Mitchell. Uh, when Mitchell came in the game, 
he has elevated his team's performance. They, they seem to like playing with him. What a great pass down low and the power delivery in the paint. See, it was the shot fake that threw the defense off. Six-nothing run now for the Trojans. Mitchell could get them to within one. Nice touch. There's a knockaway by Paul Cam, but Burris is right there. London Burris. Burris. Good ball fake, but he will walk with it. Well, Bruinsma, McGreevy on the bench, you would expect that instead of a, a comeback, you would think that they would go the other way. Nice response. And we got a jump ball in that possession arrow's in favor of Cedarville. 13 turnovers, by the way, for Western Michigan Christian. Very uncharacteristic like. And don't think that Cedarville necessarily will play for the final shot. I mean, this is a club that when they get that open look, they're going to take it. Paul Can against London Burris. Two dynamite players right there between the circles. Touch foul on Demario Harris. I, I love ball pressure, but in that Michael case, Michigan with 17 Michigan seconds Michigan to go, Michigan. Michigan. I, I, I'm not sure if that extreme ball pressure Michigan. is really necessary. Keep your guy in front of you. Don't fall. Cedarville in the double bonus now. Jarosh finally makes the first. Andrew Jarosh is a kid who shows steers. Last week or two weekends ago, he drove 1,200 miles to Iowa just to pick up a 1,050-pound calf. Made them both. Cedarville with a steal. Paul Can launches for three. Short. Ray with a rebound. Warriors with a chance to reclaim the lead. And out of bounds. Yeah, didn't it look to you like on the play instead of racing down the court that he took a look at the shot clock to see how much time was left. I think he get distracted. Paul Cam with three seconds from half court. Oh, it almost dropped in. Oh, what a fiery comeback on the part of Cedarville. A 9 nothing run to close the half. And they have reclaimed the upper hand in the Class D state championship game. It's 30 to 29. Trojans in the lead. Dave Duncan's club putting a lot of ball pressure in the backcourt. Didn't find their shooting eye for a Good while, but now it looks like they have it. And we also have the head coach. Coach Duncan, welcome in. Thanks for joining us. Your thoughts on the first half of play for your ball club? Well, I think both teams came out a little tight to start the game. and. Um, I think we settled in a little bit there in the, late in the second quarter, but we didn't make some shots, and uh, they're playing good defense. Um, we got some good minutes off the bench from some of our players, and I'm proud of them right now. Hey, Coach, defensively, you really seem to try to defend like you want to score points at the other end. Can you talk about the ball pressure and being able to turn them over? Well, we're trying to cause some turnovers. We haven't been real successful. I, you know, we've caused a few, but they're doing a good job getting back. You know, we like to get out and break, but they're doing a good job getting taking that away from us right now. I think we only got maybe one or two runouts. Coach, thanks for your time. Good luck in the second half. All right, now. thanks, guys. All right, Coach Dave Duncan in Cedarville trailed by one to Lawrence at the break in the semis. This time they've turned the table on the Warriors. They end the half on a 9-0 run and lead it 30-29. to More from the Breslin Center when we return on Fox Sports Detroit. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Check, check, check. This is a color headset. Check, check, check. How do I sound to you, uh, Josh? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Stand by. I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch spare headset into play by play. I'm gonna switch the headset around. Okay. Stand by. Okay, this is play-by-play -play headset. Check, check, check. One, two, three, four. Check, check, check. One, two, three, four. 
That's good. I just swapped the headset. Okay, I'm gonna put another headset on the spare. Stand by. The MHSAA Boys Basketball Finals on Fox Sports Detroit are brought to you by. At first glance, Damon and Keisha Brown are like any other high school coaches. Check, check, check. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two. Okay, that's, thank you. Okay, uh, welcome back to the Breslin Center. Western Michigan Christians, 15 turnovers have really hurt him. In The MHSAA Boys Basketball Finals on Fox Sports Detroit are brought to you by Farmers Insurance. To find an agent near you, call 1-800-FARMERS. We're at the break at the Breslin Center Class D State Championship. Cedarville leading Muskegon Western Michigan Christian 30 to 29, 15. That's half of the Trojans points have come off turnovers. Welcome back. We'll be joined by Tim McCormick here shortly. My name is Matt Shepard. You know, coaching really requires an awful lot of patience, just like the game of marriage, if you will. But what happens when the two intertwine or cross paths? Ryan Field has that special story for us. At first glance, Damon and Keisha Brown are like any other high school coaches. Hey, spin back, spin back. Good, good, good. Go fat! Go fat! Go fat! 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 The only difference is these two varsity head coaches from Mount Pleasant Sacred Heart are husband and wife. Actually, we uh, met in. <laughs> she was wandering the streets. I was of not. <laughs> she was wandering the streets of Providence, Rhode Island, when I found her. <laughs> we met in Rhode Island yeah. at a conference. Yeah. That first meeting took place some seven years ago, and they got married shortly thereafter. Together, they are the state of Michigan's only husband and wife head coaching combo. But that's not all. To make matters even more interesting, Keisha coaches boys varsity, while Damon coaches the girls. Shouldn't that be the other way around? No, <laughs> no not, not in my all, opinion. Not at all. <laughs> Doesn't matter. And I know it's a, a deal for other folk, but I mean, a coach is a coach is a coach, no matter whether we wear a skirt or pants. And, you know, it's all about the knowledge that you have and what you bring to the table for the kids. There's a lot of guy coaches out there that coach girls, but, you know, not a lot of girls, you know, coach, coach the guys. But I think it's unique, especially since they're husband and wife. But I, th I, think, it's, I think it's cool. Well, it was different seeing a girl coach the guy's team and a guy coach the girl's team. She's awesome. She, uh... She jokes around with us, too. She's like one of the guys, basically. But when it's time to be serious, it's time to be serious. And they're both serious about coaching. So much, in fact, they often spend time in each other's practices, sharing pointers and discussing strategies, all the while looking more like two coaches rather than husband and wife. When it comes to basketball, they both feed off each other, stuff like that. They're both always in the gym. But the weird thing is you would never really know that they're married. When we step in the court, it's, it's about business. I mean, we both, we're both competitors, and we like to win. We, we bounce ideas off each other, and you know sometimes what works for the girls for me doesn't necessarily work for the boys, and, and vice versa. But we, we we do a lot of similar drills and plays, and you know the boys and girls kind of they kind of joke about it in school, so it's kind of fun. <laughs> when they're not coaching, Damon serves as the coordinator of student activities over at Central Michigan, while Keisha is the athletic director here at Sacred Heart. Together, they raise their three-year-old daughter, Angel. So one would think, off the court, between parenthood, full-time jobs, and coaching, there'd be little time to talk hoops. But for two people with more than 20 years of coaching experience, well, that's just not possible. It depends if it's after a win or a loss. <laughs> you know, we, we've learned to give each other our spaces after games. We've kind of... You know, we've kind of said, well, let's see how this person, if they, if they need some time to kind of gather their thoughts. And, 
That took some time for us to learn that because I'm very talkative and I want to diet and you know, break things down right away. And you know, and she needs time to debrief and get her own thoughts I together. I need to be mad. But after a win, we both kind of will say, so what do you think about the game? Um, and that just kind of works out, so. Well, plus I would think it's good to have a spouse who really understands the other one's profession, which clearly this is the case. Yeah. And usually the other one's right and the other one just doesn't want to hear it. Right. <laughs> much of the case in marriage anyway, when you, the other one's right, Pretty you don't much. want to hear it. So. <laughs> I can tell you in my household, I'm always wrong. Trust me about that. All right, when we come back, we'll welcome in a guy who's always right, Tim McCormick. His thoughts on the first half, and we'll take a look at the first half stats too. You're watching the High School State Championship Basketball Edition on Fox Sports Detroit. He couldn't hear you. Yeah. Did you see the highlights by chance? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he did. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, this, oh, this thing has a volume button. That's good. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> I saw it. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. And, and Carolyn, could, when, when you tell me stuff in my headsets, it's really low, so if you could try to, I don't want to say scream at me, but if you could talk a little louder, I can barely hear you. Okay. Great. For today's game, for information, visit the Greater Lansing Convention and visit Imperial Booth near KP on the top course. Don't forget, be among the first to honor your team after the game. That's a good way to do An official that. Michigan High School Athletic Association team go, trophy presentation photograph. A special souvenirs will be available. Both teams caught fire a little bit later on in that opening half. It's been a low scoring game, but an exciting one nonetheless. Cedarville leads Muskegon Western Michigan Christian by just a point. Welcome back alongside my partner, Tim McCormick. My name is Matt Shepard. Neither team shot above 31.5%, which doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad game. Not at all. And, and I thought the key was that Cedarville didn't shoot well. They took 20 more shots than Western Michigan Christian because they attacked the glass. And let's enjoy the work from the perimeter. Knocking it down is Jeff Burris, seven points in the first half. There's London, number 14, knocking down the deep ball. And then also the step through Evan Bruinsma, versatile performer. And as advertised, Cedarville star, CJ, CJ from deep, knocking it down. Diversity is the key. Ten points, nine rebounds, and three assists. Yeah, just three of 13, but that doesn't seem to bother him that much because he still <laughs> attacks the glass. Turnover is the biggest problem for the Warriors. I mentioned prior going to the break, 15 points for Cedarville coming off the 15 turnovers. What do the Warriors have to do differently in the second half? Well, I think that they must handle the ball pressure, make the extra pass. The players seem very aggressive and confident. Maybe take a step back and throw a little patience in there as well. Yeah, well, you don't win 23 and 25 games respectively by not coming back a little bit. This one is far from over. This one should be a dandy in the third and the fourth quarter as well. C.J. Parkhan, if he can't put it in the hoop, he's going to find somebody who can. Nice outlet. We're back with more after this. Play by play talk back three two one. Play by play talk back three two one. I'm getting tendonitis in my arm from holding the. Here we go. Here we go. Yep. 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 Good. 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 I'm on. I. I'm good. Test one two one two. 
Tim one two. Talk back, Tim one two. Tim. You got it. I have it. He's got it. Okay. Class D Player of the Year, C.J. Pawkin, 10 points, 9 rebounds, leading everybody in both those categories, and his Trojans lead by one here at the Breslin Center. There's an opportunity out there to put on some stripes and put yourself in the center of the action, where you can take part in a sport you love and help kids enjoy the privilege of participating in educational athletics. The MHSAA always needs new people to become high school sports officials, so put on some stripes and register online at MHSAA.com. And what a fine job our referee crew did in the first half, allowing the players a lot of freedom, a very fast-paced contest. They're going to have a challenging second half as well. We're looking forward to bring it to you. We hope you can stick around. The third quarter upcoming on Fox Sports Detroit when we return in a moment. And if we can get to the basket, they got some foul trouble too. We got to take it at them. We can't be content just to stay here. Keep mixing it up. We got a little better movement the last couple minutes there. Pete's nice job off the bench, buddy. Just a big lift. Okay, we need that. And if we can get to the basket, they We've played 16 minutes. Cedarville has a one-point lead over Jim Gorman's Western Michigan Christian Ball Club. And the coach now joins us. Coach, 15 turnovers led to 15 Trojan points. That's probably one of your concerns, right? Yeah, there's really a couple concerns. Uh, number one, we're, uh, we're, we're making too many turnovers already at the uh, halftime. Did before half, we were... A little bit complacent with our passes and suddenly you know a little lead turns into a one-point lead for them uh, rebounding we were getting one hand on the ball we're not getting two and that's a concern uh, we're, we're just gonna have to uh, come back second half and take care of the ball and then uh, get our offense going I'm I think we're right where we want to be at one point uh, deficit right now is nothing as you know so we're ready to go the second half all right coach thanks a lot good luck in the second half thank you very much appreciate the time as always you look at the first half stats, Tim, and I, I, one of the many things that he's been talking about, not only the turnovers, but, you know, the offensive rebounds. You get 12 offensive rebounds for Cedarville. That's way too many second looks. Yeah, and that really is what kept them in the game. Also for Western Michigan Christian, 13 out of 17 from the line, very aggressive to the rim. Our halftime stats proudly presented by the MHSAA officials for kids. Starting lineups for both clubs back out there. And the Warriors will get possession to start the third. Parkham leading all scores, but a good balance for Western Michigan Christian as well. Parkham one rebound shy of a double double. Immediately, Bruins with an easy look. Now that's a well designed play at the break, isn't it? Parkham has a cannon on those outlet passes. And Matt, my favorite time of the game is the first three minutes of the second half because you can really see the coaches game plan materialize first of all the first trip for Western Michigan Christian you get a layup in the low post then pushing the tempo for Cedarville personal foul on Tyler Ray there's a three from the corner drops home for Taylor Smith so Cedarville now with five triples in the ball game. Taylor Smith has a couple of them. It's a knock away by Paul Cam, and Paul Cam will pick it up. Coast in, and finger roll at home. 
Wow, did you see the way that Mockhan pulled up, avoided the charge, and was able to concentrate and get the layup? And maybe not a great save, good hustle, bad decision. And another steal by Mockhan. He's playing a very smooth game. He'll watch a triple from downtown to come up short. Grab his own rebound, feed it inside. McGreevy can't cash in, but he's fouled. And I guess that's double-double time for C.J. Paulkan on his own miss. Yeah. yeah. By missing the shot, he's the first guy that knew that it was short. He followed it. Great delivery inside. And McGreevy sat with foul trouble in the first half. Really a, a self-made player. He works exceptionally hard, and he stepped into his role this year. Averaging five points, four and a half rebounds per game, makes the first. Tyler Ray will sit down. And Elliot Vanderlaan is back in. We talked about C.J. Paukan with his numbers. They said he only had one steal in that opening half. I thought he had a lot more than that. McGreevy is really the, the prototype of what you're looking for in high school basketball. Guys that may not be the star, but they understand their role. And what a beautiful delivery and transition. 15-4 run by Cedarville, though, has them up by three. A deep throw from Jaroch, who couldn't knock it down. Paul Can from the wing, short again. Good offensive rebound by Murray, had it blocked. Oh, what body control in there. Vanderlaan with a follow-up up the high glass. Six thirty-five, Cedarville. Murray from downtown, no. Tapped out by McGreevy. Paul Can, tough finger roll. Got his own putback. Missed it. Bruins must spinning into a double team and is fouled. Well, you treasure that basketball. You're not going to have it for very long in this game, right? <laughs> Now, there's a lot of possessions because of the pace of play. Uh, these, these teams are throwing it one, two passes, and then they're going to work offensively. You have to be in good shape to play this style, don't you, Tim? Well, at this point, they, they've been playing a lot of basketball. They're, they're not going to be phased by the pace of this contest. It was a two by Bruins, but his foot was on the line. But his range is virtually unlimited. He's put his club right back on top by one. Back and forth we go. Dynamite game. Hawkins slithers inside. Oh, what a scoop move. 30, CJ Buckman. 14 for Pawkan. What a crossover, but the lefty couldn't finish it off. Pawkan tried to hammer it off his leg instead, threw it out of bounds. Uh, there, there's so much camaraderie in these teams. In both squads, the, the coaches do a good job of building that chemistry. Jim Gorman had a steak dinner for his team at their house. His wife cooked, and they had steak and potatoes and pecan rolls. And that, that's the way that you get these teams working so well together, man. And my biggest problem with that is he didn't invite us. <laughs> they, had, they had ice cream sundaes for dessert also. Oh, you're killing me. Paul Can tries to answer, but Bruins him over the foul. It looks like Bruins Mo was complaining that Paul Can pulled him over. I, I, I thought it was just a flat-out foul, and you, you can't let a guy like that get free shots. I mean, a, a four-point play opportunity is unacceptable defensively. It was a great closeout, nice effort, just a poor decision. That's an important foul, too, because Evan Bruinsman now has three personals. As Paul Can, very good free-throw shooter, picks up his 15th point. That leads everybody. Bruinsman pacing the Warriors with 14. And one more to come. Paul Can, we talked about the double-double. Don't be surprised if he gets close to a triple-double in this one. Short on the third, we're deadlocked at 40. Fifth tie of the morning. Bruins now. He has been Western Michigan Christian's best player so far today. This is Jeff Burris. A shoulder shake and a jumper from 14 barely grazes the iron. Smith on the wing.
Murray for three. Short. Paul came with another offensive board. Way short on the putback. Oh, look at the effort by McGreevy. McGreevy always looks like he's under control. He does. He's good off the dribble, using a lot of spin moves. Great long-range shooter. Senses a nice screen, too. Jaros comes up short. But another look. Paul can And one! What a shot! That was awesome! Now, as a freshman, C.J. Pawkan played in the finals. He's been to the Final Four four times, and as a freshman, really a limited role. They were blown out, and he played late, but it created a vision on how his career would go. One of the truly great players in Trojan history. Pawkan has missed just one free throw tonight. This to give his club a three-point bump. And he does. Here's the full court pressure by the Trojans. London first good look up ahead with brother Jeff. Jeff with a sick crossover for an easy bunny for Darian Burst. That's all done because of the kid who can flat out put it on the deck and make you lose your shoes. There's a steal. London Burst up ahead. Darian Burst with a left-handed finger roll. And the Warriors are back in front by one. There's a turnover. Bruins left, two on two. Don't go away, and let me suggest you catch your breath for us. Just a brief moment. We have three and a half left in the third. This one is at a frantic pace, and it's the Warriors up by one. My brother's left-handed, he can shoot, and I know my role and he know his role. He's the shooter. He basically got the whole package, and I'm the point guard, so I dished the ball to him to get My brother's left Western Michigan Christian shooting 43%. They lead by one. Welcome back. You know, most siblings feel some sort of, well, rivalry, whether it be in school or on the basketball court. But for the Burris brothers from Western Michigan Christian, that's not the case. Leslie Moreno explains. Leslie? That's right, Matt. You might think that said Jeff and London are only a year apart, that they'd be a little competitive with each other. But the truth is they won't even play one-on-one -on -one basketball against each other in their own backyard because they're afraid of the crossing the line between being competitors and teammates. My brother's left-handed. He can shoot. And I know my role, and he know his role. He's the shooter. He basically got the whole package, and I'm the point guard, so I dished the ball to him to get the open shot so I can get my assist up. I think they both accept each other very well. If you notice, they're looking for each other because I think they've, they've done a lot of things, you know, recreation ball, uh, summer basketball, and then when it comes down here, you know, they're, they're looking for the, the open person. And the two of them have combined for 11 points already today. We'll have to see how they do the rest of the game, huh, Matt? Yeah, that's right, Leslie, but just like you were reporting, it true to form. London Burris, five assists, five of the team's eight, and Jeff Burris with seven points in the ballgame so far. So they, they speak the truth, Tim. One is the deliverer, the other the finisher, and that's the way it's played out here so far today. And both the experts in the area of the defensive intensity, they really pressure the ball. Now, one of the things that, that we're going to have to see from Western Michigan Christian is more ball security. 17 turnovers is a very high number. Also, on the offensive glass so far, Cedarville, 21 offensive rebounds already. That's amazing. Uh, Western Michigan Christian, on the other hand, uh, you, you took a look at their defensive rebounds. Uh, they have uh, a number of uh, 23. Burris 
Rose with a tough runner. With a left to oh, it throw it off. Clark Hand. Good bullet pass. The big fella pops it on the deck and lays it in. James Mitchell has five on the day to put Cedarville back in front by a long. What a spark by Mitchell. In limited minutes, he has really elevated his team. Played seven seconds in the semi. And here today has, as Tim mentioned, been a factor for this ball club. Zone defense by Cedarville. Bruins made a nice jab step to create some space, but he missed the jump. Lewis dumps it inside. First, pull it off. And Parkhan grabs the board. Well, so far in this game, C.J. Parkhan has been dominant on the glass and scoring. There's a foul, Andrew Giroux will be set to go to the free throw line. Well, so far, 19 points, 14 rebounds, three assists by C.J. Pawkin. Stepping 14, to the line for a couple of free throws is Andrew Giroux. Well, he was good at the semi he? Yeah, he was, you know what, he was really good. Yeah, better than good. They're going to say that was not in the act of shooting. Mitchell shoots and scores. How about that for the He's creating some space down low, isn't he? 47-44. Soft touch from the senior. 9-4-1 by the Trojans. Burst for three. High board. Grab. Oh, and how about keeping the dribble alive by Jeff Burris? And good matchup, Bruinsma and CJ on the perimeter. Bruinsma on a drive. A jumper. Oh, that's so tough right there. He makes it look easy, but it is. One point lead to the team in white. This has been close throughout. Nice screen up top. In and out. Mitchell fights for it. Down he goes, but Lewis comes away with it. Checked out, it's Darian Burse. Here's Lewis attacking the middle of that press. Couldn't hit it. Ball can with yet another board. Jaros wants to run. Slithers inside. Missed it. Rebound Cedarville. Good rotation. The three is off the mark. for two from the line so far tonight. Just 37 seconds remaining here in the third. The, the full court contributions of Jeff Burris have really been fun to watch. At five foot six, a dynamite contributor on the break can really deliver the ball, and he's just oozing with confidence that the Cedarville crowd acknowledges the fine work of Big Mitchell. Yeah, he's been dynamite. Scott McGreevy comes in for him, so you're well, you're really not losing anything when you go to that Trojan bench, do you? A lot of guys contributing. Burris splits the pair. That's 49-47 Warriors. And we have not seen the press. Uh, I think Cedarville scored a lot of their points by breaking the press and finding open shooters. Jerosh, who shot 10 of 20 in the semis, but has been relatively quiet so far here today. Game clock reached 15. Jerosh lost it on the deck and reached it and fouled. London Burris. 
Burke's got an elbow on the top of his melon. It's two personals now. Three. Yeah, if really this game goes right game down to the wire, as it kind of appears that it, it looks like will. it's going to, doesn't it? Yeah, the, the Warriors would have to have an advantage, and they've been really good closers this year. Three times they've had games with buzzer victories. Jeff Burris run into some traffic, and that'll do it through three quarters. I like it. I like it a lot. And the fourth quarter figures to be just as exciting. It's all green and white in the house of the Spartans. And it has been a dynamite contest through three. We'll bring you the exciting fourth quarter with Class D on the line when we return on Fox Sports Detroit after the game. The MHSAA Boys Basketball Finals on Fox Sports Detroit are brought to you by Officials for Kids. High school game officials improving the quality of care for kids at Children's Miracle Network Hospitals across the state. Welcome back to the Breslin Center. An exciting three quarters of action so far for Class D state championship bragging rights. You see the score by quarter. You see how close it has been, but get this. Western Michigan Christian has taken 22 fewer shots than Cedarville and yet leads by two. Isn't it amazing that they have a chance to win a state championship and they're shooting 26% from the field? That is amazing. That's Cedarville. But they do have 22 yeah, offensive boards. That is something else. C.J. Pawkan working on a triple-double. Kind of an unusual one. He's got 19 points, 17 rebounds. And get this, he's missed 17 shots. Yeah, he's taken 23, folks. There's number 24, but comes up empty. Bruinsma had it knocked away, got it right back. A lot of fun players to watch in this ball game so far. Look this guy, Jeff Kerr. Brother London, now Bruins look for three. Good box out. How about that inside by Luke Murray and out of bounds. Luke Murray wears number 33 in white. He did a great job putting a body on a man. Give this ball to the Trojans here. Man-to-man yeah, -man defense. It's all we've seen in the second half. Murray for three. Got it. Cedarville's back in Sixth triple of the day for Cedarville. Back-to-back threes by the Trojans, and they 
pushed in front by four. Paul Camp, the Class D Player of the Year. He, he's really tough. I don't care about the field goal percentage. He is playing great defense, very active on the glass, and he's scoring points in a big game. And he's not getting tired. He hasn't rested all morning long. He'll tell you he's got plenty of time to sit down and take a breather after this one. The senior leading Cedarville to a 53-49 lead, but 6.05 remains at the Breslin Center on Fox Sports. They started to, they wanted that, but I thought Cedarville did a nice job overplaying. They wanted to go to Bruins on the back door. Instead, they couldn't find him because of the Trojans deep. 53-49, Cedarville and White. And a foul call. Rebounding has been an issue for both of these teams. They were both out rebounding the semifinals. But kind of an interesting statistic. Muskegon Western Christian has given up 22 offensive rebounds, but they're actually out rebounding Cedarville for the game. Sometimes statistics just don't make a whole lot of sense in a contest, and maybe in this one it doesn't. But as we get ready for our next contest, this place is starting to fill up, Matt. Really good attendance throughout the tournament so far. Great, yeah. Mario Harris with his first point of the day after making the first free throw, rimmed out the second. And out of bounds, it'll be Cedarville, Cedarville ball. Three-point lead for Cedarville. The team in white. Who on the year, 25 one ranked fourth in the state. And a turnover. Harris flips it up ahead. This is Jeff Burris. Now DeMario Harris, a three-guard offense out there for Western Michigan Christian. Very much a perimeter offense. Throwing some a tough turnaround. Comes up empty. Rebound, Harris. Got a kind roll. Tricky. DeMario Harris. Paul Cannon around the screen. Smith. Now Jarosh. Tough shot in the lane. Bounced off. Kuzman with a man sized board and he leaves the break. And a walking violation. Sure. Yeah, a little bit careless. 18 turnovers so far has been an issue. Yeah. 
a major issue. That's one of those things that Coach Gorman told us at halftime. We must correct. Cedarville has 18 points off those 18 Warrior turnovers. And yet, it's just a one-point game. Uh, the pace of, of play has been extraordinary. And a lot of times that the players, they have spent so much energy in transition with their presser defense. I'm anxious to see if anybody can knock down shots here in the last four quarter two. Might be the difference in the ballgame if they can. Coming up next month to Fox Sports Detroit, it's the return of MHSAA Magazine, a seasonal recap of state finals competition, highlighting the team and the individual champions in all sports. The winter recap of MHSAA Magazine premieres Saturday, April 18th at noon, and only here on Fox Sports Detroit. In terms of the rebounding numbers, I want you to share the story again about the John Beeline philosophy about you don't have to necessarily win the rebounding battle. That's right. Yeah, Coach uh, Dave Duncan of Cedarville told us after the semis, he said, sure, we were outboarded in that game 52-26, but he heard Co Michigan, John, Michigan coach John Beeline speak earlier in the year, and he told him there's lots of different ways to win a ball game. You don't always have to win the battle of the boards. Paul Cam with a fadeaway. Ray behind the back toss to Harris on the rebound. Ray nearly walked through. Now he'll post up. Work on McGreevy. Good shot at him. I would go right back there next time. And defensively, you, you got to get a hand up and then rebound. That's a foul. That sure is. Tyler Ray. And Scott McGreevy getting tangled up. It looked like Ray used that big left arm of his to hook Scott McGreevy. If so, it's his fourth personal foul. I really like the way that the Warriors play defense. There's Jim Gorman, and he said that he learned his philosophy on the defensive end from former Wisconsin Badger coach Dick Bennett. It's about closing the lane, and he has a special tape that outlines the eight defensive principles of what they're all about. Talking about Western Michigan Christian. And Jim Gorman's got to find a replacement for Ty Tyler Ray because actually that was his fifth personal foul, and he's fouled out. Well, these, these coaches, there's a reason they're playing for state championships and the success that they've had, and they're referring to guys like Dick Bennett, who's a great basketball coach. And of course, Bull Ryan now in Madison, an equally as talented coach. And then we talked about the John Beeline reference from Coach Dave Duncan. They're learning, aren't they? Yeah. Some really yeah. honest. And, and remember, in the first half, we talked about Dave Duncan's offense. The motion comes directly from Bruce Weber from Illinois. Right. Okay, spinning, and it's straight. Nearly got it back. Now, these teams have been shooting quick. Now would be a good time for long possessions and good ball security. Bruinsma doesn't share your philosophy and comes up short. There's a three from Smith, but he missed it. Bruinsma with a big board right there. One point lead for this club right here. It has the basketball. kids know exactly what he wants. Scott McGreevy has four personal fouls now. His club under the guidance of Dave Duncan trails by three to the fan base that is Western Michigan Christian. They are on their feet, waving their green towels. Their club is two minutes and 40 seconds away from repeating his champions. Let's go inside that Cedarville huddle and see what Dave Duncan is talking over with his ball club. 
tournaments came around and just uh, took advantage of it and I have never been more emotional. I was tearing up out there and I wouldn't normally say that in television but yeah it's uh, pretty emotional for me. Emotional in a number of different ways. We told you the story about Mary Beth Paukan and how they remember her with that black band on their left shoulders and now what an emotional run it has been for both these clubs and what a ball game we've witnessed here so far today. A minute 39 to go and what is at stake are lifetime memories someday these guys will be 40 and 50 and 60 years old and they will remember with vivid clarity what will happen over the next couple of minutes. Warriors with the lead and the ball. London Burris. You might as well play as aggressive man-to-man -man defense. You can gamble because you can't let these guys just dribble the clock out. Harris on the wing. This is Jeff Burris. He'll pull it out. State champion a year ago. They know how to win, don't they? Absolutely. Attacks the zone. Bounce pass. Bruce Buck. 
So far, seven points on a perfect three for three shooting night. The bridge was perfect from the line there. Eighteen on the night for the junior, and it's a four point lead for Western Michigan Christian. Now, the defense will be extended, which gives you opportunities to maybe get to the rim and get the layup. Marquan, nice screen by Mitchell. Marquand comes up short. Bruins has his double-double. Well, now is the time you have to attack the ball. You're down four. It's a two-possession game. And you're approaching foul time. Bruins on a drive. A scoop. No. Knocked out and out of bounds by Elliot Vanderland. That's Cedar Robar. 35 and a half seconds, and you get a four-point lead. A little surprised he took that shot. I don't think that you shoot the ball there. The only way that Cedarville can get back in that time is if you take a quick shot or turn it over. Jarosh. They need a three. Maybe this is a two-possession game. There's the three, but the rainbow didn't drop. Bruins, but who else for the rebound? And he's fouled in the backcourt. Really no surprise that Bruins, but now double-double. Boasting a player that has a double-double. And Bruins went right back to the free throw. Has a chance at 20 Christian points, 10 rebounds. And for senior bill number four, Jordan Baker for Mitchell Mitchell. sits down for Cedarville. Jordan Baker is in. And a timeout for the Trojan. Jim Gorman's club down by one at the break, allowing 23 offensive rebounds. Shooting under 40%, and yet on the verge of winning a second consecutive crown, and a fourth since 1992. Uh, Jim Gorman told me yesterday that the key to their run to a state championship was their last game of the season. They played Muskegon Catholic Central and they were blown out by 15 points. That was the attention getter that had his kids focused so they could win today. One of the many guys focused here today, Evans Bergman. He's been part of Jim Gorman's program for a long time and don't think the head coach doesn't appreciate it. Evan is a player. Evan is a is the kind of guy that you want to go to when you need a basket. And, uh, you know, if he was a guard, it would be in his hands automatically. Tonight, you know, you got London Burris, who's got the ball in his hand. But Evan can hit the three-point shot. He can go inside with a post up. Um, we just got to do the things to get him open, and uh, he's going to be productive. Well, if you want production, you have it. 18 points, 11 rebounds, with two free throws coming. Yeah. Man, there was a game this year, he made eight three-pointers in a game. He missed the front end. Remember, Bruce man, 20 and 16 in the semis. Oh, man, drains a big three from straight away. It's a one-point lead. Somebody's got a foul, and Paul Can does. No timeouts. Very good communication from bench to players, knowing that you knock down the three, there are no timeouts, get the quick ball. And what a big time delivery. Wow. Huge three, 25 tonight for the Class D Player of the Year. And how important are these? If he makes both, if he makes both, you still can top. Still a one possession game, London Burst, the front end of the one on one. Missed it! Knocked out of out, Cedarville ball with 11 and a half seconds to go. You've got the Class D Player of the Year. 
put the ball in CJ's hands and go to work. Timeout, Western Michigan Christian. Will they pressure the basketball? Will they deny CJ Pocan? Someone will be denied after this special contest in about 11 and a half seconds. Just a one point difference. Cedarville will have the basketball and the chance to wear a crown for the second time in three years. All right, let's talk some strategy. Dave Duncan wants his playmaker to take the shot. Jeff Gorman is saying, I don't want the star to beat me. If somebody's going to beat me right now, it's got to be one of the support guys, somebody that doesn't have that ultra confidence of leading a team. I would send two guys at CJ and make him a passer. Would you defend the inbound pass and then try to deny him access to the ball, or would you let the inbound pass go unguarded? When I, I would leave it unguarded. I would pick up at a half court, and as soon as the ball's in his hands, I'd send a double team and make him get rid of it. CJ, screen up. Good news if you're a Cedarville fan. You've had plenty of guys step forward with big games this year in tight situations, not just Spokane. You've also had Jerome, who came up huge in the semifinals with 27. Murray and Smith are used to bright lights as well. Let's see who they get it in the hands of and how they go to work. This is a moment that will live with these kids the rest of their lives. Pass or fail. They will leave the inbound unguarded and pick up Pocan full court. Pocan lost the handle for a moment. He's got six seconds. It's crossover on Harris. He turns, fires, short, and the Warriors defend their championship by one. Sports is. You can learn from victories, you can learn from defeats. CJ Pawkam was outstanding in Cedarville's one point setback. Evan Bruins carried the Warriors with a double double 20 points, 11 rebounds, and what a win for Jim Gorman's program. A young team, and yet they did what a veteran laden club did a year ago. Won it all in class D. We'll be back to wrap up at the Wrestling Center after an exciting 62-61 final.
Heartbreaking loss for Cedarville, but a gut check win for Western Michigan Christian. They win it 62-61 to repeat as champions in a dynamite ball game. Tim McCormick really was fun. I've been broadcasting these for a long time. That was one of the most exciting finishes that I've seen. Congratulations to both teams on a job well done. I don't know if I've ever seen a team out-rebound itself offensive rebounds to defensive rebounds. Cedarville had 23 offensive caroms, but in the end, the 20 and a half, 28 and a half percent shooting did him in, didn't it? And Evan Bruins, my diversified star, I thought that he was the key player. He had 18 points and 11 defensive rebounds. Amazing, and three steals to boot. C.J. Paucan, 25 points, Tim, 18 rebounds, but as impressive as anything else, nine on the offensive glass. Yeah, and, and I like the fact that he had a chance to win the game. That's yeah. the way it should have gone down. He'll think about that shot for a long time, but you cannot argue with the fact that he was squared up, the defense contested it, and it just didn't go in. We had 15 lead changes, five ties, and... Western Michigan Christian wins it 62 to 61. I got to be honest with you folks, we're here all day long. So if you get games like this one the rest of the day, you don't have to move a muscle. Stay tuned to Fox Sports Detroit for the Class C title game featuring Schoolcraft against Melvindale. Now for Tim McCormick, Les Moreno, and the rest of our Fox Sports Detroit crew, my name is Matt Shepard saying so long to the Resident Center. Muskegon Western Michigan Christian wins it by one, 62-61. And you've been watching high school basketball on Fox Sports Detroit. Coming up next is high school hammer time. Accepting the championship trophy for Muskegon West.